We've been programmed with a belief that if you have a good life and you die, you get a chance to go to heaven, which is what? The cre heaven is anybody's individual thing. I talk to you, you give me your definition of heaven, you listen to my definition, you listen to somebody else, they're all different. We all have creative vision. So heaven is a creative place. And I go, so what's relevant? I go, once I started to understand this stuff, first of all, I never believed in spirituality, but the science revealed using quantum physics and epigenetics that we are a field, an energy field playing through this body. What I learned through this is, first of all, there's no such thing as death of who we are. There's death of the body, but the body is like a virtual reality soup that an energy field that is different for each one of us is operating in this body. My uh, self receptors on my cells, which distinguish me as being different from you, respond to a different environmental signal than your self receptor. So each of us is receiving like a broadcast that is running this biology. Consciousness is running the biology. Consciousness isn't physical, it's an energy. And I go, why is it relevant? Because the answer was this, the belief that if you do really well and you you know persevere, and when you die, you're gonna go to this place called heaven. And I go, consider this, that we were born into heaven, that we came here to create. That's what we're doing, we're creating. And I say, when we're creating it right, heaven on earth is here. When we're creating it wrong, struggle is here. And all of a sudden I say, oh my God, don't wait till you die that you're gonna to go to heaven. You are, this is it. This is where you came to create. What do you wanna create? Love? Coronavirus? You can create any damn thing you want. This is creation place. But if you don't know that your creations are being controlled, then we become a victim of a world out of control. And yet we were the creators. We gave in to other people's beliefs. And then we now are creating not with our wishes and desires, we're creating with the program. Where's the program taking us right now? And the answer is fear, shutdown, loss of community, breakdown of the system. I go, we can learn or not. That's it. And this is a learning moment. Take your power back. You are beyond uh, power wise, beyond any virus that ever existed. You are very powerful. Every human, and this is a fact, every human first seven years is, uh, is download a hypnosis. The brain of a, a child under seven is in a lower vibrational frequency. When you put wires on a, a person's head, you read electroencephalograph, reading brain activity. A child below seven has a lower vibration than consciousness. It's called theta. Theta is imagination. Oh, that's how kids play a, a tea party with mud pies, but to them it's a real thing. A kid rides a broom, it's a horse. It's, that's theta, imagination. Theta is also hypnosis. And the idea is this, before you can become conscious, if you don't have any programs, what are you gonna be conscious of? So nature makes the first seven years how, what kind of programs are required to live on this planet? I say, how do you get them? Theta is hypnosis. You just watch. You watch your parents, you watch your siblings, and your community, because you have to learn how many hundred thousand rules, think about it. Just to be a functional member of a family and a functional member of a community, there are rules. I teach an infant these rules. I say, oh, you don't have to. First seven years, they just they observe it and just download it. Look, this is not new. I mean, there's the famous book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And basically said, you come from a poor family and you could struggle your whole life and try to get rich, but you're not gonna make it. And if you come from a rich family, you could be stupid your whole life and make it. Not because it was thinking, but it was unconscious behavior that was downloaded from rich families into kids, uh, which is unconscious. So they're, they're making the right moves unconsciously. If they engage their conscious mind, then they look stupid, but it's unconscious. And that's the same thing with poor people. Poor people have beliefs from the family Oh, you can't make it, life's a struggle, things are hard, who do you think you are? And if that's the program you get, then 95% of the day you will sabotage yourself. And that's why poor people stay poor and rich people stay rich, because the programming. 95% of our life, this is a fact, comes from those programs in the subconscious. Every day, only about 5% of the life are you using conscious, which is creative. 
5%. So your life is being lived, even though you think you're living your life. Exactly, and you don't see it because it's called subconscious, below conscious. Uh, and the Jesuits, for 400 years, they were boasting. and people didn't understand. They say, give me a child until it's seven and I will show you the man. They've been saying that for 400 years because they knew seven years was the program period. And 95% of your life after that will be whatever that program is. Your life is a printout of your subconscious behavior. Oh, so you don't have to try and think about what happened. I just say, look at your life. The things you like that come into your life come in because you have a program that supports them. But anything you struggle with, work hard at, put a lot of effort into making it happen, why you're working so hard, inevitably you have a program that doesn't support that conclusion and you're trying to override the program. So uh, you don't need to do a lot of shrink and psychology stuff. You just look at your life and say, where am I struggling? Because wherever you're struggling, inevitably it's a program in your subconscious that does not support that destination you've been looking for. The conscious mind uh, is creative and can learn in any number of ways. Read a self-help book, go to a lecture, listen to this program, and conscious mind's going to get some awareness. And I go, yeah, but subconscious mind doesn't learn that way. I go, right, it doesn't. Subconscious mind learns in two fundamental ways, naturally. Hypnosis, which is the first seven years. And after age seven, how do you put new programs in? Repetition. Practice. You want to drive a car? You didn't learn, learn how by just getting in the seat and put the key in. You had to practice driving the car. You want to learn uh, the alphabet. How many times did you go from A to Z? Uh, you know, try to go to A to Z before you can complete it. And once you completed it, you didn't have to go back and do it again. So two phases. You want to train the subconscious mind? Hypnosis. Uh, repetition. The, uh, I like the last one because there's a new phrase that's bandied about called fake it till you make it. Mm. Meaning if you're not a happy person, I say you want to be a happy person, then repeat all the time. I'm happy. I'm happy. I say, well, you don't look happy or anything. You say, no, I, who, who am I talking to? By repetition, I'm talking to subconscious. Okay. If subconscious gets I am happy and 95% of your life comes from that subconscious, there will be a point once the subconscious got I am happy, you don't have to say it again. Okay. It'll be automatic. And that's why we see people do affirmations and gratitude journals and stuff, because if you do that daily... It's repetitive, and that's the the secret part. Putting a sticky note on the refrigerator is more like a suggestion, but it's not a repetition. So it doesn't work very well. But you have to do... Repetition is a a habit. It's making habit. So you got to do something religiously in the sense of repeating it, repeating it, repeating it to make it work. Uh, if you don't like the program, you don't like the way it's turning out, well, then you can reprogram it. And you could get the things you want. The movie The Matrix is not science fiction. It's a documentary. This is the whole story of The Matrix. Matrix, uh, you've been programmed? Oh, we're going to take a red pill and get out of the program, okay? Falling in love is the equivalent of taking the red pill biologically. Scientists have studied what is called mind wandering. I say, what is mind wandering? I say, well, your conscious mind could be focused on a task, or your conscious mind could go off into a, you know, think about things, okay? Uh, and, and the relevance about that is when the conscious mind is staying in the front, you're in absolute control, wishes, desires, what you want, conscious mind, creative, you're in control. But the moment your conscious mind takes off into a thought or starts thinking or whatever going on, Uh, It lets go of the wheel, the autopilot takes over, okay? So the idea is this, if your mind is wandering, then you're being run by the subconscious. Uh, uh, And it turns out, this is very negative. When your mind is straightforward in consciousness, you're, uh, you're controlling the vehicle. So I say, falling in love has been demonstrated biologically to be equivalent to the red pill because what it does is it keeps you, what do they call, mindful, keeps you conscious. Look, you've been looking for this partner your whole life. They're now in front of your face. This is not the time to go thinking about things. It's time to be, look what I got right here in front of me. And I say, well, think about it this way. Your life could suck every day, every day, every day, every day. And then you meet this person and 24 hours later, it's heaven on earth. 24 hours later, oh my God, I'm so in love. You know, even the job's not so bad anymore and the food tastes great and the music is so much better and love and love and love. I go, what the heck happened? You had all of this negative, negative, and then in 24 hours, you have this heaven on earth. And the answer was, it was taking the red pill. That's what falling in love is. At that moment, you stop playing the program. Now you're operating from 
conscious mind, which is creative, which by definition is wishes and desires. What the heck do you want from your life? If you answer that question, it's a creative answer, and by definition, it's conscious. So your wishes and desires are in your conscious mind. In a normal person's life, 5% of the day, you're moving toward that. 95% you're playing the program. You fall in love, 100, it was actually 90%, I think is the number, 90% from conscious mind. 90% of the day you are now operating from creative wishes and desires. I go, look, I said your life sucked all the way up and then 24 hours of operating on wishes and desires and not playing the program turned earth into heaven for you at that moment. And, and then you go, well, how come the honeymoon doesn't last? I go, because inevitably you still have to think about things, your job, your chores, your requirements, what you have to do. And at some point, once you start thinking, then the conscious mind is shut off. And guess what shows up? All those behaviors in the subconscious mind that were negative, 70%. And your partner, remember, your partner and you fall in love, same time, both of you operating from conscious mind with wishes and desires. And all of a sudden, you start thinking, and then this behavior shows up that was your mother, your father, whatever thing you learned. And your partner is like, where the hell did that come from? Who are you? Is a response. It's like, where did that come from? I, you know, we've been in this honeymoon. I've never seen that behavior. If you would have played that behavior on the first date, maybe we wouldn't have a second date, but now it shows up. And I say, why did it show up? Because I stopped being mindful. Okay. So how do you teach people to keep the honeymoon alive? Is to change the, the subconscious program. <clears throat> and, and it's simple for reason. Reasoning is simple. Conscious mind wishes and desires. Subconscious mind program. Well, what if you took the wishes and desires and made those programs? Ah, then guess what? You don't even have to think about it. You will automatically, 95% of the day, be playing behaviors to manifest those wishes and desires. Okay. So reprogramming the subconscious with wishes and desires means you don't even have to think about it. So when you fall in love, the cocktail of chemicals coming out of your brain are things that enhance your vitality, your life, make you healthier, happier, and joy. I go, the same person, if they open their eyes and see something that scares them, none of those love chemicals are gonna come out of the brain. At that moment, stress hormones and inflammatory agents are gonna be released by the brain. All of a sudden I say, well, how did you change the chemical composition of the culture medium? I go, yeah. Result? The composition of the culture medium controlled the fate of the cells. The composition of your blood controls the fate of your cells. The composition of your blood based on the picture in your mind. Change the picture, you change the chemistry. Almost everybody has the same wishes and desires. To be in love, to be happy, to be healthy, to be peaceful. That's a standard wish and desire of everybody. And if we all lived with those wishes and desires, this planet would change overnight. We would have harmony, we would have peace, we would have nature, uh, community, environment. But until we change those subconscious programs and we become victims of the program and not creators of our life. And when this is understood, then people could say, wait, I have a choice. I say, you do. You can play the programs you're playing or you can rewrite those programs and take power back. And that's our destination.